If you're new to Godot and GDScript, then you're in the right place. Today we're looking at what functions are and how to use them. What's up everybody, welcome to MyPixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. So what are functions and why are they useful? Well, functions are blocks of code that are able to be named and executed when called by that name. They're useful for many reasons, but one major one is that it allows you to reuse code that you would have had to type out again otherwise. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. In many of the previous tutorials, we have been making use of the ready function. This is a built-in function whose purpose is to run all code contained in it as soon as the game is run. Today, we're still going to use a ready function, but we're also going to make a function of our own. We can declare our function like this. We tell the engine that this is a function with the keyword func. We give it a name a set of open and closed parentheses, and finally a colon to end the line. The pass statement that you see there is just so that we don't receive any errors as GDScript will not allow us to have a function block with no code in it. As soon as we get some other code in there, we can delete the pass if we want to. Let's add some code to our function. You might recognize this as the code that changed our text in the previous tutorials. Let's go ahead and run the game and see what happens. And nothing happens. That's because the code in the function will not run until we call the function. We'll call the function within our ready function. At this point, you might wonder why we don't have to call the ready function for it to run. The reason for this is that Godot automatically calls the ready function for us in the background. With that, our first function should run as soon as the game starts, and we should see our adjusted text. And we see our text there, great! So aside from just running a certain piece of code, a function can be built to accept different parameters to change the outcome of the code that runs within it. We do this through the use of arguments. Arguments are values that we pass into the function that it then uses when running its code. Here, we'll go ahead and pass a variable into the function as an argument. But first, let's comment out our previous function call and create a new variable. Now we'll create a new function. Inside of the parentheses, we have to create a name for the argument, which basically works like a variable that only works within the function. Here we went ahead and named that argument new underscore text. Now inside the function, we have to go ahead and use our new underscore text argument to do something. For this example, we simply set the text box text to be the value of the argument. With that done, we'll call our function and then feed it our sum text variable as an argument. When we call the function, we simply put our argument within the parentheses. So let's run the game and check our work. Awesome. We see that our text has changed to the value contained in the sum underscore text variable that was passed in as an argument to our function. In addition to running code and then accepting values in the form of arguments, functions can also return values after they run. Let's comment out our previous function call and create a new function. We'll use the keyword return to define the function's return value. Now that we have that, the text functions are awesome will be returned from the function after it's called. We can assign the return value to a variable like this. With this, we can run our game and then we should see functions are awesome in the text box. And that's exactly what we see. All the functions that we created can be called as many times as we like. Functions give us the ability to reuse code they accept arguments to allow us to modify their behavior, and they can return values which we can then assign or evaluate in other parts of our code. If you liked today's video, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on what's coming up next. The sprites, source code, and everything else that I've used in this tutorial today is available for download on my Patreon page, so if by chance you want to check that out and maybe also support the channel, the link is in the description. Thanks to everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.